I've been promising to do some videos on really cheap food to various folk on Twitter for ages and I'm, I'm getting around to it now. I'm sorry it's taken me so long but here we are. This is a bit of foraging but it doesn't have to be. What I'm making today is a wild mushroom patty. But you can use any mushrooms, shop bought button mushrooms are fine. What you need are mushrooms, I got 250 grams there. These are field mushrooms because they're, they're easy and they're everywhere right now and they're very tasty. But any kind of wild or fresh mushroom that you can eat, as long as it's something you can eat, is good. Cream cheese, I'll be using about a tablespoon, a bit of all for frying. Salt and pepper and some dried herbs, anything you want, this is thyme. A bit of onion, I use about half of that, and a clove or two of garlic. If you don't have all of these ingredients, that's fine, you can do without the garlic, you can do without maybe the onion, but you're going to need something to hold the mushrooms together, and that is the cream cheese. It's essentially the mushrooms cooked down, blended up, and added to the cheese to hold them together. So without further ado, I'm going to give these a brush off, cut them up small, dice up about half that onion, crush a clove of garlic, and get them in a frying pan. So the onion's been softening for about a minute. In goes garlic and the mushrooms, and a little bit of the dry thyme which I'm using. You can use parsley, you could use marjoram, anything you fancy. I like a bit of thyme with mushroom patty. Uh, I'm going to put salt and pepper in and then cook it down until it goes a little bit dry. The mushrooms have got a lot of water in. You're not trying to cook it until it's a really hard, firm, dry mass. You want to get some of that water out of it. So cook it down until it's a bit, well, drier. And I'll come back to you then. They're cooked down enough now. So, you know, it's not it's not dead dry. It's not like what the French call a duzel, which is a a long slow way of cooking mushrooms to store but it just wants to get some of the water off get it so it's it's going to form a paste when you blend it up now i'm going to use a stick blender but i've also previously used a sort of kitchen knife just cut it up fine that'll be mixed with some cream cheese about that much uh, blend it up and then left to cool and that's it that's your mushroom patty now i'm building this as a patty because as such it is it's great on some crackers or on some bread maybe with some ham, maybe with some vegetables and a salad, any way you like. But another thing you can do with it is you can put it in the middle of pasta and use it as a filling for ravioli, which I'll perhaps show you in another video. So I'm going to blend this up now. I'll stop recording while I do it because that can be very, very noisy. And I will show you the finished result. I've just scraped it from the bowl after the blending and it's in here now. It's a little bit runny still, but that's going to firm up and set when I put it in the fridge. I let it cool a bit before I put it in the fridge because you don't put anything too warm in there. And that's it. This is as good a mushroom patty as you'll ever taste. You can do it with any mushrooms you like, as long as they're edible. So if you find some sort of in the sort of throw it out section of the supermarket at the end of the day, or if you find some cheap in the greengrocers, or if you can pick a few field mushrooms, you know what you're doing. Or anything that's common that's edible. Uh, I've used pink cracking bull eats for this, yellow cracking bull eats for this. Wild horse mushrooms are very good. If it's a good tasty edible mushroom, it will work. This is a great overlap of foraging and, and thrift really. As I say, this is good as a pate, you can put it in with pasta, you can even just thin it out with a little bit of cream and use it as a pasta sauce in itself. It's a handy and useful dish. This will last in the fridge quite happily for four or five days without much of a problem. If you want to keep it for longer than that, it freezes perfectly well as well. So I hope you like this. I will, if there's a demand, I'll do more of these videos showing you how to cook things very, very thriftily and very easily. And um, I will see you next time.